Hey there YouTube, this is the Redstone Warrior here, wanting to show you some of the things that have happened uh, since last time I posted the video. I joined the RDF, and I became an admin on it. I'm currently a, an admin on it. And yeah, a lot of things have happened, a lot. I'm going to try to brush through most of them on the video. Okay, so quickly, this is my main plot on the RDF. This is where I put a lot of my stuff. Okay. First thing, ASEI decoder for an, a uh, 5x7 display. Uh, it's basically a ton of ROM, 35 char 32 characters at the moment, not too much. Uh, it actually, me, Anomalous Cobra, and uh, Yoki just sat down and coded it in, didn't take long. Uh, this is extremely compact ROM. Basically how it works is there are repeaters which go across, which will turn off all these torches. And if it's selected, it will turn those repeaters off so that the torches may output into this repeater line. And how to use it is you just input an address to this decoder down here. So I'm going to do address 7 out of 32. And address 7 is the letter G. Okay, moving on quickly. There's the hack. I haven't actually done much with that. I think I imported that pretty early on in the server. Okay, moving on. Esther flops, piston state memory. This is extremely compact memory, some of the most compact um, I've ever seen. And basically, here's how it works: pistons can be powered from outside of an area that updates them. So, as you can see, I'm powering this line, but the pistons are not opening. But if you update the pistons, they open. So, quite simply, updating the pistons will let them change value. And if you don't up them, update them, then Well then, I guess they just stay that way. You can read out using this mechanism here. It is a 2x3 schematic. Uh, we call them Esther flops, or I do at least, because Estran was the one who really first experimented them with them, uh, with them and gave me this idea. Basically, this is the update line. For each byte, this updates the piston, the pistons, so it will set itself to the input. And that's basically it. It is extremely compact RAM. This is 16 bytes. Yeah, that's a lot. Okay, moving on quickly. Uh, here's my plot. I have quite a few things in it. Here's an early version of the uh, Piston State RAM. It's this has a one by six, five, one by five footprint. It was actually slower and less compact. Okay, moving on quickly. Uh, here is actually I made this roughly about the same. I might have put put this in my other video. I made this roughly the same time I made the 764x64 display. This is actually the idea for a binary multiplier, which I'll show you more soon. Okay, so since last time I uh, considered doing this CPU, it is the Dart CPU, it's an architecture I just created, put a lot of thought into this. I never actually created this because it would have taken a lot of time and it would have been very slow. But basically it has two ALUs which has everything from division to square root remainder. Uh, 16 bytes or 32 bytes of registers, RAM, a lot of control. Okay, anyways. I never actually did that. I believe we've decided that's just not practical. Okay, so continuing to move on. Uh, these plots that I'm on, they're four, four plots. They're actually, were, they were intended for the Dart CPU, but uh, that never got really started. It never got off the ground. So, uh, I repurposed them for a lot of different things, and they've been very busy. Okay, here's the i4004. It is almost complete. It is a modification that me and Tommy's worked out. It's a 4-bit CPU. It uses a... It, uh, it was one of Intel's first ever 4-bit CPUs. Sorry, uh, not the first 4-bit CPU, but it was one of their first microprocessors. It's pretty small. Uh, there's registers, uh, an ALU, a decoder, PC over there address, register, which our modification has, and control. Uh, we're considering doing a time, lap, time lapse of making one of these, but we have to finish it first, which haven't, I haven't dedicated myself to at the moment. Okay, the next item on the agenda, piston state memory. This is RAM. It's readable, writable, and addressable, so I can t say set byte 72 to 5, but really it'd be 71, but this is 72 bytes of data that I can read to, read from, write to, and address. This is extremely compact, this is 72 bytes completely. Most compact memory I've ever, I've ever seen so far. 
And basically, here's how it works. Each one of these tapes, for each row across, each one of these tapes will represent one bit. So for one byte, this is a bit, this is a bit, this is a bit, this is a bit, that's a bit. Something like this. The reason it goes back and forth is because I had to read-write heads, so they're staggered. But here's basically how it works. E there are eight tapes. Each one represents a bit in each byte. And uh, whether the bit is on or off is determined by whether the glass is on the left or if the glass is on the right. Or you could say if the stands if the sandstone's on the left or right. So basically, if this is this way or if it's pl flipped, so it'd be something like I don't have glass on me, but uh, it'd be something it'd be flipped. I can show you actually. So basically, it's this circular tape where you rotate it to go to the desired bit. It only goes in one direction at the moment because two directions would change the entire system layout. 72 bits. It's probably going to be roughly 7 ticks per uh, bit rotation, so it would take a while. It's probably going to be more of a hard drive. Maybe for something like the MCTP or USB if that ever goes off the ground. Okay, so here's how it works. Basically, you rotate in to the read-write head, whatever byte you want to modify, or read from. And basically, it reads from it. I see this torch down here. If this block is uh, solid, then this redstone torch will turn on. This line will turn on. And if it's glass, it doesn't. So it's 1 or 0. Now, if you want to change that, here's the a, uh, right head. Basically, it acts as a T flip flop. It flips it. Okay, it takes about 6 ticks to flip the bit. So watch right here. I'm just going to force it to, force it to switch. Actually, I'll demonstrate it using the actual system. What this does is, in order to determine whether or not it wants to flip the bit, it runs through an XOR of the imp the current value and what you want it to be. So if it's equal, it will uh, not flip. If it's not equal, it won't flip. So it'll basically change it to the right value. That was really fast. So you can see that the glass and the sandstone switch place, and that now denotes a 1, because the output is 1. Uh, it won't flip again, because I basically told it, told the uh, bank to set this specific bit to uh, 1. But now if I tell it to write again, it flips all over. It's really, really fast. I'm going to cheat now. I'll do it two more times. So basically what happens is, that sticky piston up there pulls the glass block up, then that piston pushes it over, while well, that sticky piston back there, you can barely see it, pulls the sandstone block o over there, and then this one pushes it down. So, now that this thing actually wants to change to get to the right one, here we go. Okay, watch it last time. It takes about six ticks to do that. Really, really fast writing. Okay, so that sums up this part of it. So this is addressed by the address drum, which does a phenomenally compact, tricky piece of circuitry. It's basically non-writable. It's only you can only read it, and it addresses each row of tape. So basically, what it does is it runs it runs the desired address through the through an XOR that is hooked up to the current address, which is represent which is represented by glass blocks and sandstone blocks. And uh, if it's not equal, then it will keep rotating. If it is equal, it won't rotate, and it will say it's equal, and you can write to it. And yeah, this was actually inspired by Antique. Uh, he may have gotten the idea from someone else. I'm not sure, but he made a square one of these. So it had very little. It had a. It I think it had 46 bytes, and I can, thought the idea of uh, just making go up and down, up and down as many times as you could to add as many bytes as you can. Uh, he considered doing it, but he didn't want to do it because it because getting it this compact would be very hard. Uh, I managed to make the read. I optimized his read write heads actually. Uh, it's much. It's faster, and uh, yeah, I got them to be too high. Okay, so this is the 72 bytes of memory that deserves a lot more coverage, but I don't have time to give it to you. Okay, next thing, the ASCII display. Uh, that will probably lag the computer a lot. I'm going to go over here. I think the server, no, the server's okay. Here is a 16-bit multiplier. Uh, it was for going, going to be for one of the, for both of the Dart ALUs. Uh, you have 16-bit input, input here and 16-bit input along the side, and has an overflow flag. Here's the 16-bit divider. Both of these are completely modular, and this one's more complex. It's partially incomplete, but it would take me like 
30 seconds to uh, fix it. Fix the fact that it's incomplete. I just have not done so yet. Okay, so here is a binary to BDC, aka binary to decimal. So you input a binary number into this, and it'll spit out what the number in decimal is. So you can read it. So the current value is, uh, this is flipped. The current 7 segs up there are malfunctioning for some reason, I haven't checked it. It's uh, currently equal to 6, 8, 5, 7, 6. Hard to read in here, I know. I really don't know what's up with these. Uh, I didn't make those. Okay. So, that it, that basically turns binary to a uh, decimal, readable re decimal. It uses something called shift plus 3 algorithm, which basically it... Uh, shifts the number, and for every 4-bit section, if it's going to equal more than 10, it adds 3 so it goes over to the next bit. It's weird. This is a combinational uh, combinational implementation of it. Okay, um, here's the same thing except sequential. Basically, I took the thing, I took the 1-bit um, unit, and I just put in a loop with some basal flops, basal flops, which basically are, uh, they're a type of memory. This repeater will power itself, and this piston can cut it off, so if you cut it off, then you can turn to zero, and then you can power this while it's down with the repeater. It's very good memory. Okay, um, this square root extractor, okay. This is a 16-bit square root finder. It also gives a remainder. Uh, due to block updates, which are just failures in Minecraft to calculate correctly, this is not currently going to work, probably. It's just weird. The server is also very laggy sometimes, so... Basically, you input the inverted number here, and it comes out the other end as what you're, the number you're trying to find. Unfortunately, Minecraft has some issues with uh, block updates, so... If I updated this whole thing, it'd work. It's just weird. Okay, next thing which is going to be very important to um, something which, you, if you look on the RDF channel, you'll see a soon a video about it. And here's what it is. This is uh, an important piece to it. Okay, this is what we refer to as the M most significant bit detector, MSB detector. It's not a tr completely accurate name, but what it does is it finds the point at which redstone signal ends. So basically, you can send more data than just a 1 or a 0. You can send... Uh, up the maximum you can send is 16 bits. Sorry, uh, it's not 16 bits, 4 bits per line. So basically, what happens is, this, the signal goes to here, and I made it so that the output is inverted, it makes it faster, actually. And what you can do is you can actually transfer the signal really easily, so you can have four bits on one wire, as opposed to one bit on one wire. It's really interesting, although rather impractical and hard. Uh, this detector, basically, it'll find the points at which uh, the redstone ends by this. So I'll take this as an example. So here, this is where it ends. Sorry, this is where it ends. What ha is happening is this block has power, but this one does not. So I'll show it to you here. Uh, it'll be easy if I just do this actually. Oh, also well, this one I made modified it to output a binary number. It takes one, two, three, four ticks to output a binary number, which is very fast. So that's equal to nine, ten. 11. Very, very fast. Okay. So how this works is, if it's 0, that means that's where the signal ends. So how this particular part is, what it does is, um, here it's an OK, and then just ORs up there, basically meaning that for this to be 0, first of all, it can't have power up here, because if it had power up here, it just go straight over and make it 1, but it does have to have power up here, otherwise this torch would be lit up and it would uh, power it. That's basically how it works. We uh, This actually developed out of technology you're going to see later. I'm not going to put it out yet until uh, the official release. It, me and Estrant actually worked out the entire system months ago. It's just someone made a similar... Someone we hear is trying to make something similar, so... Uh, Estrant wasn't around, so I just organized a team to build the whole thing. Okay, so that's very important it, for a couple things really interesting things. Okay, so we have the 72 bytes of data, we have the divider, the multiplier, the binary to decimal. I also made a decimal to binary, but it's not here at the moment. Uh, square root, signal, 
the mo most significant bit detector. And I'm going to jump over here. Oh, Minecraft crashed. Okay. And yes, I do have an account. Tons of people have been posting that I don't. That's really annoying. The RDF is an actual server that is on line mode, so go figure. Okay. This will take a little bit to load, so I'm going to go over here. Uh, this is a quick 2-bit CLA, similar to the last one, except it's smaller and faster. Not much of an improvement. I actually made a... Uh, we got bored, so we decided to make a 4-bit carry look head adder. It was slow. I don't really like it. 2-bit's much better. Oop, got stuck. Okay. So here is basically the ACI display hooked up to RS Snore 7x5 displays. Uh, it's not going to load for a little bit. There's a lot of things to load. Okay, basically, there are four levels. Each level has its own decoder. Uh, and basically, what it does is it feeds into this bus, where the bus also outputs two of these segments, and you can set each one of these to uh, accept the input. It's really good for displaying characters. Someone actually messed with it, so this bottom line, you may not be able to see until it loads, but... So this bottom line said uh, Minecraft, but it got messed with, so... It's a very simplistic system, but it works very well. Ah. Lag. Okay, there we go. So basically, this is a uh, 10 by 4, I think. 7 by 5 displays. Yeah, some mess with that. Okay, it's just... You can display a lot of uh, data. So you could have a computer that actually has text going out. So you have the extremely compact memory, ASCII display and decoder, uh, multiplier divider, bina binary decimal decimal binary, square root, uh, signal length, I4004, I haven't done anything with a hack, um, I think that's it, uh, mostly it, I'm considering doing a couple other things, uh, yes that is basically it. There's another thing which I am not going to present yet, as you may have guessed, it's going to be presented or there's going to be a release of it because multiple people worked on it on the RDF channel and that's basically it I am also actually working on another idea uh, you may have heard uh, if you go on the forums you'll probably find the MCTP it's basically a giant router in the internet in Minecraft I'm considering working on something for that oh yes also the uh, I may have mentioned that but the hard drive is actually perfect for printer, a 3D printer, it can actually store, uh, let me just go back here, that hard drive can actually store enough data to create a uh, 8x8x9 image on a 3D printer. Now if it loads, that's another story. Okay, forcing load. So this thing has enough for an 8x8x9 image, which if you look at a Shrog made a 3D printer that was 8 by 8 by 12. If you look at that RAM, this represents three quarters of that. It's extremely compact. I'm not sure I can emphasize that enough. Okay, so that's basically it. I promise there's more to come. Uh, this is the Redstone Warrior saying thanks for watching and more to come.